Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought that I'd make a big old pot of gypsy stew since it has been so cold and rainy here in Kentucky. And I thought that I'd share the recipe with all of you so that maybe you can make some for your family and hopefully enjoy it. So if this recipe looks a little familiar, that is because it is a lot like vegetable soup, but I do add stew meat to it so it's more filling. When growing up in a gypsy family, you have a lot of mouths to feed and so that is why we call it gypsy stew and it is very inexpensive. So what you'll need is stew meat, potatoes, an onion, tomato sauce, tomato paste, and tomato puree, and then I get two of each can of vegetables. So I fill a pot up with enough water in it just to cover up the meat. Then of course I wash my hands because I will be touching the food and I don't want to get anyone sick. So I'm just going to cut open my packages of meat. I do get two packages only because we like our soup to have a lot of stew in it. We do warm this over and eat it the day after, and my husband also takes it to work for his lunch. So now we're just going to rinse our meat off before we put it in our pot of water. And I take a knife and I cut the chunks of meat only because they are kind of long. So while I'm doing this, I want to mention that I do have my pot of water on the stove boiling. This part is very time consuming, but we want to make sure that every piece of the stew meat is a nice size bite. So now we are just going to separate it from the dirty water and we're going to give it one more rinse. And now that my water has came to a boil, I am just going to add the stew meat to it. And I'm doing this very carefully only because I don't want the water to splash up on me. Then I'm just going to season with salt and pepper. I'm going to put my lid on and then lower the heat. And again, I'm washing my hands again because I don't want to cross contaminate anything and I'm going to start peeling potatoes. So I use a lot of potatoes because that's just how we like our stew, but it's really up to you how many potatoes you want to add. Now I'm just going to dice my potatoes all up. It 
it's totally up to you on how big you want the pieces to be. Now I'm just going to put all my potatoes into the strainer so that I can wash them. Here I'm just rinsing my potatoes off. And I am going to cut up an onion. I hate doing this part. It always makes me cry. And I've always got to stop for a second just so that I can actually see. So now that my meat is browned, this is what you want it to look like. And I'm gonna add my potatoes in very carefully. And also my onions. And while I let the meat, potatoes, and onions simmer, I'm just going to quickly clean up my kitchen. And I don't want my potatoes to get really soft only because I still have to add in the vegetables and the tomato sauce and puree. So I'm just gonna let that simmer for about 15 minutes. I have to clean my kitchen as I go while I cook because I hate cooking in a dirty kitchen. So now I'm just going to check on my stew because I don't want my potatoes to soften. And I always add this into the meat and potatoes because it is my husband's favorite. I don't really know how to pronounce it. With your sheer sauce, with your sour sauce, I don't know. And then I'm going to salt and pepper it. Just mix it all up. That Worcestershire sauce really gives the meat and potatoes a good flavor. And while that cooks for a little bit longer, I am going to start opening up all the cans of my vegetables.
You can add one can of each or you can add two cans. It really depends on how many people you're feeding. That is totally up to you. So now that I've got all this open, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato sauce and tomato puree to my meat and potatoes. I do drain some of the water out first before I do that. And then I start adding all my vegetables. I also want to note to drain some of the liquid out of each can of vegetables before adding it because you don't want it to overflow in your pot. So now this is the last step. After that's cooked for a while and my vegetables have softened, I'm just going to add a couple spoonfuls of tomato paste into my soup because I don't want it to be too runny and I also don't want it to be too thick. That's why I don't add the whole can. And then I just let the heat reduce that down. So now that a few minutes has passed, your soup is now done. Just let it cool down and then you can eat. I wanna thank everyone for watching. If you haven't already, Make sure you subscribe to my channel for future videos like this. If you have any other video ideas, maybe more recipes, just comment down below. And I just want to thank everyone for watching.